Hi and welcome back to this next video of the Haga Cut video series. Great to have you back on my channel. In the last videos we took a look at how we can create the electrical diagram for our electrical installation, in this case for an example project. And in this video we want to take a look at how we can create an enclosure diagram with Haga Cut. And how easy this is you will see after the intro. So I am back here in this little smart home project that we created in the last videos. And in this video I want to create an enclosure diagram with HagaCut. Therefore HagaCut has its own module, here this enclosure module. And if we click on it we will get prompted to this assistant. Now here in this assistant you might already know it from the normal electrical diagram mode. Here we basically tell HagaCut how the technical summary should look like. So here you can decide between different structures. So I will take this basic structure here, click on next. And now I have two options on how I can create such an enclosure diagram. As you can see here, we can either start the automatic calculation or we can also create this diagram manually which is what I want to do first. So therefore here I unmark the setting and then click on OK. And now you can see here we have this wide window and here I can now place down the enclosure that I want to use. So I click here on catalogs and then you can see those two different filters here or these two different categories. Here within consumer units and distribution boards you can find all the different enclosures that Haga provides you with. Now in a real application this enclosure is based on the rules of the country your installation is placed. So for example in Germany I have different enclosures than you can see here. And so therefore because I'm used to those enclosures I want to use an enclosure here within HagaCut that is like the enclosures that I have in the German version. And I can find this enclosure here within FW board surface mounted. And now here you already know this window from for example the circuit breakers or the residual current devices. Here we just set up the device, so the enclosure now in this case. Now I want to have a modular cabinet, so with the DIN rails already mounted. So for example with the 650 millimeter height. And then you can also see here we have different accessories that we can add later on. Now I can click here on add and with that you can see we have our enclosure. Now this view might not be that useful because here we can only see the enclosure with a closed door. But we want to take a look inside. And so therefore you have this menu here on top. Here you can decide the direction that you want to look at the enclosure. So either front, right, rear etc. And also an isometric view. So the isometric view just means sort of an 3D view. And then we can decide on how the enclosure should be configured. So if we want to see the door or only the front plates or without the front plates so that we can see the Dean rails etc. And then here this last setting here is the style on which you want to see the enclosure. So for example this realistic style might be useful for the isometric view, so for this 3D view. If you are inside of this 3D view, well then you can navigate with the arrow keys and you can rotate the enclosure. Now to place down my devices I go back to the front view and to the conceptual style because I think with this style you can see everything more clearly. And now I can start to place down my devices. So I can start here with my surge protective device. So now I hold it here and you can already see here with these blue lines marked there we can place down this device. So for example I want to have it here on the bottom on the left side because my incoming comes from here. And then I can start to place down the next devices. So for example here we have the RCD which I place down and now before I start to place down the circuit breakers itself 
I want to make it a little bit easier. So therefore I first of all place down here these KNX contacts of this dimmer. So I place down the dimmer. Then here we have the switching actuator which I also place down. And down below here we have the shutter actuator. Because what I can do now is I can start to click on my first circuit breaker. Then hold the shift button and click on the last circuit breaker. And now you can already see that I have multiple circuit breakers selected, which I want to place next to my RCD. Click on it. And now you can see here this setting or this arrow here pops up. And if I click on this arrow, you can see that all these circuit breakers were placed down. Of course, I can do this also with other devices. So whenever I mark multiple devices that I want to place down, I can use this feature. Now here I can already see that I have a circuit breakers in between of my RCBOs, which was for the electrical oven. So I place it down first, maybe here, and the RCD for it. And then I can do the exact same thing like I did for my circuit breakers with the RCBOs. So I click on the first RCBO, then on the last, place down the first one, and then click on this arrow so that it fills up this DIN ray. Then we have the circuit breaker, which was, I think, for the shutters. So I place it next to my shutter actuator. And then we have a circuit breaker here, which was for the Koenig's power supply, which I also placed down. Now that I mentioned the power supply, we don't have it here within the electrical structure. But where can we find it? Well, therefore we always have the project store. Because here in this project store, you can also find devices that can't be linked into this electrical structure. So if I click here on device, you can already see here we have the power supply as well as the twilight switch. So I click first of all on my power supply, place it down. And then here we have our twilight switch, which just fits here in between. And with that, we have placed down everything. And now you maybe saw it, the twilight switch had also the sensor for the clock associated to it, but this can't be placed down within this enclosure because it normally sits outside of the building. So the last thing that is missing are our terminal clocks, which you can find here. And now here we have different terminal clock. So here we have X1 and X2 because here now this is really easy because you just have to click on the first terminal of this block X1 which marks all of them and then you can place down the first then click on the arrow and with that you have placed down those terminal blocks. Now I also do it for X2 and because I know that this terminal block is pretty large I start already here on this side then click on the arrow and you can already see that this DIN rail didn't fit all of those terminal blocks. So therefore I start with the next DIN rail and I hope that now everything fits on it. Nope, one is still missing. So I just place it down here. And with that you can see that we have created our enclosure diagram. And we can take a look at it even in the 3D view. So if I click here on isometric, you can see the enclosure in a 3D view also with the devices inside of it as well as here those terminal blocks. Now I go back to the front view. What we can also add is a dimensioning. So therefore I go here under tools and click on automatic dimensioning. And with that we can also see the dimensions of this enclosure within our diagram. And last but not least, I also want to click here on this auto complement feature. Click on OK. And with this feature, all necessary access walls for this enclosure are added to my project store. So for example, the wiring rails for my RCDs or the circuit breakers, etc. So this was the easy way. If you now want to print this enclosure diagram, you just go here onto the print button and here within the selection of the documents, you can see here that we have the enclosure diagram and here you can specify which layouts you want to print. So for example, here without front plate in front and 3D perspective, clicking here on print 
And with that, if I go here onto the last page, you can see that here we now have our enclosure diagram with the front view and here with the 3D view. Now another feature that I want to show you is if you have an enclosure which is empty and you have to place down modules in order to place down the devices. In order to find those modules more quickly, because you have different modules based on the devices that you want to place on it, you can just right click on the device that you want to place down and then click here to search and fit it kit. And now here I unmarked this enclosure filter so that I can see all the modules that exist for this device. You can already see that here we have different kits that we can choose from. If I click on it, here we can see the specification of those kits. And if I select it, you can see this is the kit itself, which has to be placed now in this case inside of an Orion enclosure. Now if I go back here into the catalogs and here within Orion plus cabinet, I can click for example this metal cabinet and now I have to specify it with the correct height. So maybe this height here, click on add. This should theoretically fit. And you can see that now we have placed the module inside of it. And here within this enclosure, we can now place down, for example, also these KNX actuators, etc. Now I return it to the project store because I don't need it for now. And with that you have seen and with that, you have seen how you can manually create the enclosure diagram. Now I will quickly reset everything and then I want to show you the automatic mode. So now I deleted everything and I have an empty enclosure diagram. And now I can start this enclosure calculation here on top. And what this enclosure calculation does is based on the devices that I have within my electrical structure, it calculates the enclosure that I need in order to fit all of my devices. Now, therefore, Haga needs to know some additional information. So for example, here, which IP category I want or the IK category. So I just stick here to IP 20. Then I can decide from where the incoming is inserted. So bottom or the top, I go here to bottom. Then for modular devices, I can also insert heat spacers so that the heat can distribute more easily within the distribution. And now here I can specify a reserve, which I want to have for my enclosure based on the modules I have. So I have 57 modules with 50% reserve, which I can change. So for example, 20%. So Haga calculates 14 modules in reserve. And the same applies also here for the terminals. I can also add a reserve of 10%. So then Haga cut adds three additional spaces for the calculation. Now here with other reserve, I can also add devices which aren't yet placed down in this enclosure, but maybe they will get installed later on and I already need this place. So this is what this window means. Now, after I have set up everything here, I can take a look at the enclosure families that Haga provides me with. Now here you can already see we have the FW cabinet, which I also want to use. We could also, for example, use the Orion plus family, but we stick here to FW, then click on next. Then I can specify on how I want to connect my terminals to the wires. And so if I click on it, I can decide the direction of the connection. So either on top or the bottom, I stick here to top, then click on next. And now you can see the module or the enclosure that HagaCut calculated. And if I want to use it, I can click here on preview, which you can see here, or I can change the configuration here with these two buttons. Again, click on preview to see what HagaCut has calculated. Now here, just the size of this FW enclosure changes. So I stick to the smallest one. And here you can also see the real reserves. So not just the reserves that we want to have at least, but here you can see the real reserves. So when I'm finished, I click here on OK. And with that, HagaCut has calculated the enclosures 
for us and it also has placed down the devices. So here on the left side you can see some KNX actuators, you can also see the circuit breakers as well as the RCDs. Now you don't have to use this positioning, you can also change it later on. So for example if I want to have my KNX devices all next to each other, I can just drag and drop them around so that I have the configuration that I want. So this is how you can use the automatic mode to find the right enclosure for your installation. Now with that you saw all the necessary modules that you need in order to create a good documentation for your electrical installation. But with HagaCut you can only use Haga products or? Well, that this isn't true I want to show you in the next video where we want to add products to HagaCut that aren't from Haga so that we can use those products from external manufacturers within our documentation. If you enjoyed this video consider a like and subscribe to the channel to get notified for new videos. And I'm excited to see you in the next video of this video series.